we're going to go ahead and begin. Tonight's in a, a very appropriate topic, I think, for all of us. We're going to talk specifically about self-esteem, but we're going to do it in kind of a, a way that's informed by the law of one and also um, some psychology. So I hope that it's... Let's just go ahead and be present. We're going to breathe in a couple of times. Just open our hearts to each other. Into this group. And we invoke the one infinite creator, the spirit, the great spirit, who creates us and is us lives in and through us as us, guides us, yearns for us, and leads us to greener pastures of higher ways to see ourselves if we but trust and have faith in the leading. So often it's easier to see ourselves with the eyes of criticism and even hate or dislike. And so we ask that the one infinite creator awaken in us the spirit of unity and union, both with each other, also internally, and with the one infinite creator. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm entitling this <clears throat> as Know Yourself, Accept Yourself, and Become the Creator. Using self-compassion as a life-giving tool to help discipline the personality so we can become more crystallized healers in the world. It's a long title. Um, it's... The first part is directly from the law of one and Ra talks about how to the the way to become an adept and to learn uh, you know get really into creating um, vibrational changes in the world which is often called the white magician is they say that there's three steps it's to know yourself accept yourself and become the creator so we're going to talk a little bit about that, but we're going to do it not so philosophical, no, not so psychological. It's going to be some images um, and a few titles that I hope will get us talking a little bit. <clears throat> so here, um, if you can see that the bottom is the bottom of the screen golden as it is, we're going to Think of that as the one infinite creator, uh, this matrix of unity and union. And then sitting upon that, uh, anchored into that, melded in as part of that, we can say that this might be our self. And I have it in the form of a pyramid that has the different colors of the uh, chakra system in there. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and purple. <clears throat> so this is who we are. Um, regardless of our past lives, regardless of our past in this life, and regardless of how we feel in this life, this is who we are. Right here. Unbroken and grafted into the one infinite creator. But it's not how we often feel about ourselves. Uh, most of the time we do not. And this is a product, uh, or you could call it, yeah, a product of the veil of forgetting. And the veil of forgetting was conceived by the holy 
Logoi uh, millions and millions of years ago as a conception that they had to, <clears throat> um, as part of the one infinite creator, to bring in a really intense experience in third density, which would then become the cornerstone upon which the creation stands. Uh, because it, the veil of forgetting does many things. One of them is to um, quicken the evolution of consciousness. Really, the third and fourth densities um, really got quickened by probably millions and millions and millions of years. But also, um, it's a real, in a way, it's a real privilege or it's a novel concept for something infinite to experience uh, life in this illusion as finite or separate. But that is what we feel. It doesn't mean it's true, but it is indeed what we feel in as the creator on this side of the veil. And here's the, the, the piece I think where a lot of us are struggling, and I, I am one of them too, is um, we can conceptually maybe understand the law of one. We can keep it in the realm of concepts, some of the things that Ra talks about. We might even be able to grant to other people uh, their own dignity as as the creator knowing itself as that person in their life. But boy, is it hard to do it with and for ourselves. And there's lots of reasons for that. Um, maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. We don't have to. But I do believe it is a product um, of the veil. And we're going to kind of look and set it up as to what how this might actually look and feel like. So as you can see here, <clears throat> the uh, pyramid is separated now. We have the bottom part of the pyramid, the big part you would say, uh, is red, orange, and yellow. This will be the lower chakras. And then the top part of the pyramid is green, blue, indigo, and purple. And those are the higher energy centers. And uh, the field of the heart, which is the green ray, that's where we start to intuit and begin to have gnosis, lived experiential reality of unitive consciousness. And again, we may have unit of consciousness in lots of different ways, but it often is very difficult for the self-esteem part, for it to really sink down and for us to see ourselves with the eyes of the Creator, uh, to see ourselves with the mind of Christ, as some Christians like to talk about it. So it feels like there's a separation. It's very strong. And uh, Ra does talk about how um, the path of union and unity is one in which we become one with ourselves inside ourselves and all the different parts of ourselves, including the parts that are in the shadows, some of the parts we might be shameful of, or some of the parts we don't know yet. But nevertheless, they often make their way up into the conscious level, the conscious, um, and we might do actions that surprise us, or we might have feelings about ourselves that might even surprise us given the fact that we are trying to live out the law of one, but then why are we perhaps seeing ourselves with such, um, with a lens and a bias of deep separation that we are somehow cut off and that begets loneliness, it begets insecurity, it begets um, feelings of imposter syndrome, uh, low self-esteem, patterns of behavior that 
we are starting to see more clearly of ways in which we might engage with other people that start to repeat themselves and we're awakening to the fact that they're not life-giving. <clears throat> so this is what reality is actually like. You can see it's <laughs> uh, paradise, you know, mountains, beach, rivers, um, green snow beautiful sunset i mean this is this is kind of like uh, the what reality is actually like being connected i'm i'm trying to elus elicit some emotions with some of these pictures and on our better days when we're in our anchored selves our true selves you, we probably do feel this way maybe we're in a, a moment of deep um, servicing a, another person and we feel like we're being used in sort of a crystallized way at that moment maybe that's a time when we feel like we're in this kind of connection that that feels like a paradise but oftentimes this is what reality can feel like and as you can see in this image here it's desolate and dark and the light is is hidden. Um, it feels foreboding and dry and cracked and brittle, um, lifeless, ominous, dangerous, lonely, uh, alienated, you know? So this is often what a lot of us feel like. Now, I know I'm not talking to everybody because there's there's at least two or th maybe, two, well, I can think of only one person, but maybe there's more um, here in Building Forth that doesn't have, uh, probably two or three, but doesn't have these kinds of experiences. Um, and I used to have them more and more when I was younger, but I, I do find myself in emotional situations, even now, where I'll feel a ping of some some level of shame or a season in my life that um, is so heavy and I, f I feel alone or disconnected and the landscape feels a little bit like this image. So I'm just going to pause here really quick and um, just ask if the, if, if maybe is there, what do you sense in this image? Have you ever felt this way? Does it resonate with maybe some of how you might have felt in the past? Or can you see? I have, Doug, most certainly in, in my past, as you know. Um, but I can say that over time, it's those experiences are fewer and far between. But I've spent a lot of time in, in that landscape. Mm -hmm. in my life, you know, 20s and 30s, 40s. Yeah. A little better, a little better, a little better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I agree. It does get better. Uh, it does get better. And it doesn't have to be. So uh, if I knew now, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have experienced a lot of the stuff, but I wouldn't be where I'm at right now had I not experienced it. So... Um, yeah, Fred, were you going to say something? Um, I've had um, moments in specifically, uh, Barbara, with you mentioning 20s, 30s, and 40s, it triggered my thoughts and my memory of like many of those. I had a lot of depression in my teens, and then I found myself coming out of them. Uh, but what I noticed is that like there is this persistence of this type of landscape that comes back and comes back and comes back. And it's almost like, it's almost like, see, if the landscape could talk, it was, it's saying, see, I am real. Don't you realize that I am real and this, you know, this is all there is type thing. And, and it's almost like it's, it's almost like just because I keep finding myself every now and then coming back to it, it's like 
that is enough evidence to say in the show, uh, maybe you should just give in to this because this is all there is. And I know that's not the case, but you know, when you're there, when I'm there emotionally, I'm tempted to say, why do I keep ending up here where things don't seem to grow? where, you know, it's just so dark, where it's so uncomfortable. That's all I wanted to say. And we feel like we're so alone. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that we may conceptually know that other people have, might be feeling this way, but in the moment it feels like there's there's no real reason to reach out because who would understand and how would I even, why would I even want to share this? Yeah. Uh, but what we're going to be talking tonight is, is kind of how to move through that. How to move through that. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have uh, the... Again, the pyramid, and we have the separation from the top and then the bottom. And this is also borrowing from the Law of One. Uh, the very bottom of the pyramid that's in the red uh, ray is, will I survive? These are things that happen automatically on the unconscious for, for, peop for those millions of us who struggle from time to time with low self-esteem is when we're in a given situation, Ra says that the first opportunity for catalyst is with the red ray in terms of survival. Now we may not actively think, well, am I gonna survive here? Although I'm sure we've been in situations where it's like, dude, I don't know. Um, but I do believe that it's very, very prominent in our unconscious is scanning the horizon where we're at um, and thinking, you know, is, am I going to survive here? Especially for you sixes. <laughs> for you sixes, this is the game in town. Um, then the next layer is the orange ray. And Ra says that this is the question of personal identity. And consciously or unconsciously, the constant thing that comes up for people like us who, who um, have low self-esteem from time to time is, who am I now? And who am I now? And then the next situation, geez, well, who am I now? And sometimes we find ourselves in a situation that we feel uncomfortable, like an imposter. You know, um, an imposter syndrome is incredibly common, incredibly common. It's this sense that if people actually knew how, knew who we really were, or maybe how um, uh, ineffectual we, we really were, incompetent, that they wouldn't hire us or talk to us or consider us um, as experts in anything. And when we go to some place like that, it's who am I now? Who am I in this? Or um, for a lot of us who may have social anxiety, uh, I mean, just going to a coffee shop, for example, with other people in it, this question of, well, who am I here? What's my purpose and meaning here? And, and you know, I would say probably millions and millions of people never even think those things. It's not even a blimp in their eye, in their mind. But for millions and millions of people, there's a constant taking of the temperature of themselves on an essence level, on an ontological level. Who am I? And that ties into the third area of the lower chakra system that, and this is the area that a lot of us are kind of dealing with, and that is 
the area of the yellow ray, which Ra talks about, is um, kind of responsible for the social relations. <clears throat> and often the question that we have is, do I belong with them, with those people? To whom do I belong? And more commonly, it's how do I fit in here? I don't fit in here. I don't belong here. I'm not good enough to belong here. All these people are better than me in some in this way or that way. And if they really knew just how I am not that good, they would all stare at me and make me go away. And then what happens is <clears throat> when we have those kinds of biases, um, if someone looks at us, they may be looking through us. Maybe they're daydreaming and they happen to look at us and our eyes make contact. Uh, and they might not even be registering that we're even there. But because I might have that bias of feeling, do I fit in here? Do I belong? What purpose do I have here with these people? And then someone looks at me. Well, then it might be real easy for me to interpret that look as confirmation that indeed I do not belong here or I got to try harder to fit in here. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to stop here and just um, ask if, if this resonates with anybody or is this Maybe you guys are don't feel this way. <laughs> this is not something that you struggle with. I know I'm thinking a lot of people that I work with that often do, and I have myself from time to time. Does anybody have any thoughts here on these three areas that I just shared? Yeah, it's a, a constant with me. Just kind of every day worrying what people think and how do I fit in and am I good enough and the imposter syndrome is just almost to a level where it's debilitating and trying to get on certain meds and just talk with Troy and other therapists to figure out like why it's so intense. And like, I can recognize it and see it and meditate and kind of separate myself from that being and right back into a social situation. It's just very similar and can't shake it. So it's an everyday thing. And, I'm putting myself out there into a career where I have to be loud and kind of perform in front of people. And that's 180 from where I was. So yeah, it's, it's a everyday battle and places like this or groups like this are trying to, I guess, help me get past that and very thankful for everything you're doing. Well, we're, we're, we're thankful for your courage to share uh, anytime, but especially about this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, does anybody have any reaction to that or sharing your own story related to our topic right now? Uh, yeah, actually, I really resonated with pretty much everything you said, Doug, and also you as well, Neil. Um, I'm a type six, and I feel like even then I... <laughs> still have a lot of anxiety even considering that. So kind of for as long as I can remember, like since I was maybe like six years old, I've just had a lot of anxiety, a lot of OCD. And yeah, it's just really difficult, I think, because I, I used to be a lot more extroverted before the pandemic. And then I kind of isolated myself a lot out of anxiety about the pandemic and also trying to just make sure, you know, I don't harm anyone around me. And so... It kind of got pretty extreme, though, where I just totally isolated, didn't really want to go anywhere. And I think these last probably like the last six months or so, I've really been trying to kind of push myself to get out there more. But it's difficult because I miss the connections that I used to be able to make a lot easier, um, like back in college and stuff. But now it's just it's tough. Like, you know, I have coworkers that are really nice and I go into the office a few days a week, but even just like a simple interaction with small talk, I'll, I'll panic and I'll worry about it for the rest of the day. So it's just really tough because I feel like right now I'm kind of limited to having 
meaningful interactions with people that I know really well. But my goal is to really expand that more and get more comfortable talking to just acquaintances or strangers. Well, Claire, thank you um, for having the courage here to share that with us. Uh, not bad for six, I might add. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I would say, well, we're going to definitely give you some tools. We're going to talk about some tools to use um, by the end of this gathering here tonight. But I would say that um, you are speaking right now for millions of people who are feeling this way, what you just said uh, and the way you said it, and you said it so honestly. Um, if I could uh, to, to chime in as well again, um, when looking at the uh, picture here with, uh, you know, aligning them with the chakras and the colors and the questions like sitting right in the middle of those, what's good for me is that this is almost like almost identified if I could use the analogy, if I had a mosquito bite and I did not know, but I know I got an itch and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's where it's at. That's kind of what this has done. It's like, oh, especially in those moments of doubt, I constantly find myself asking the question from that lower shock, from that red savant, how do I survive? Oh, I see what I I see what that is now. That's and so you kind of the soothing part for me is just some of that identifying it and saying oh, that's just that's what that is and i have moments when i don't feel you know everybody has had a mosquito bite you get bit and there are times when you're bit but you're not itching right and then there's times where that itch just goes in and you're like you're trying to find it what you helped me do is just kind of locate it some and say okay i see what that is and that within itself is a help for me so thank you Thank you. That's exactly what we're trying to do here is often if you can just identify, uh, lay, put a label perhaps and locate what chakra or combination of chakras are going on, those energy centers, when we start to feel that rising up of low self-esteem or shame, the, the heat around the ears, sometimes uh, the flush of the face. Um, <clears throat> It's just our chakras talking to each other <laughs> down there. And here's what's interesting is that the chakras are yearning for the, the upper chakra system. So you can see I put a magnet. It's like this magnet. And that's that, that's that constant yearning inside to connect with our, within ourselves and then connect with others. Like uh, Neil, for example, uh, shared you know, his almost constant social anxiety that he has, yet he chose a profession that gets him out, up and out in front of people. Um, the power of your magnet, Neil, <laughs> the power of your seeking is incredible. And, uh, you know, seek and you shall find. That's, that is, uh, you could have gone the opposite direction but that's not what your soul has told you. You almost don't have a choice, do you? <laughs> no, like I, I see the love and have so much love and I am just blocked. Yeah, it's just yellow blocked and I have just everything. Like I feel like I have so much more to give, but it's just this constant, you're not good enough type of self talking me down, so. Yeah, and that's that yearning. But see, you, the, the upper chakras in ourselves are yearning for the connection in the lower chakras. There's the yearning here that is just pulling and pulling and pulling. And we, when we feel the restlessness uh, and the desire to move past the internal pain that we might feel when we're comparing ourselves to other people, that's, that's kind of how I envision the chakras the upper chakras and lower chakras is yearning for that connection. And it's in the urgency of the yearning where we actually make the most mistakes. Um, so we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> so. Sirach has a question. Oh, Sirach, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, 
Um, I, what was I going to say? I don't, I think I was just going to say earlier. I don't remember. Sorry, man. I was going to say um, that, yeah, what you're saying resonates when a catalyst arises in me. I think identifying the chakra helps. Um, something I've been doing that I feel like takes, it, I'm working with assumptions here, but when I have a feeling rise, I try to trace it back to a memory or a moment in my life where um, uh, maybe I experienced that feeling and I try to go back and maybe love myself, forgive myself. The forgive myself is kind of weird because sometimes I feel like I don't, I didn't really do anything wrong. So, for, so for example, like I pressed this raise my hand feature in this zoom chat. And then I think like a minute passed, two minutes passed. And I was kind of like, I felt like this feeling rose of like, man, I really want to share, but I don't really, you know, want to interrupt, but I also feel led to say something, but I also like, does, is Doug noticing me? Did Doug forget about me? Does Doug love me? Does Doug, the, and but so all those feelings are rising up. And so I, um, I didn't even realize I felt it then. I'm just thinking of an example now, but I, but t trying to trace it back to a memory where maybe I didn't feel seen or feel heard that I feel like that's maybe like a, like an orange block. Like who am I, if I'm not sharing something or, but tracing it back to a memory and then loving, forgiving myself, just giving myself a big old, you know, eth etheric hug. <laughs> in, in time space, because, you know, you can go across time. Yeah. 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 That's, so that, that was what I was going to say. Well, Sirach, I didn't even think of that, but that is an incredibly beautiful and I'm, I bet, effective way to really give yourself some love, but also start changing some of those neural pathways to connect it with a memory of when you might have felt that way and then, and then hug yourself and love yourself like a, a compassionate witness. Gosh. Really, really gorgeous. That's that's wonderful. What's well, the essence of healing prayer that uh, I've done a lot through the years as a spiritual, as a therapist, and as a uh, spiritual director? Yeah, and I think maybe if you could uh, put that in our chat, not the chat here, but in Slack forum, and we can make you know make that available for others. That healing prayer, that would be really good if you could do that. Um, so the red chakra, the red ray, <clears throat> often is... Uh, what. So what gets in the way of the connection with the top? That's the question. And the, the red ray is, will I survive? I don't know. I probably need to fight, flee, or freeze. The second chakra is oftentimes something like, I'm an imposter. I am my pain body. Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body and we over identify with our pain or I am my mistakes or I am wrong or I am stupid or I am weak. I am lonely. And overall it would be, I am shame itself. That's that personal identity. That would be an orange center blockage there. And then the yellow center blockage can often be linked, really, if you want to study the Enneagram. Um, obviously, I'm not, we don't have time to go into the Enneagram, but <clears throat> I'll just say it out loud here is, remember the, orange uh, the, sorry, the yellow chakra is social relations. And so we might have the sense that we have to cover up our, quote, lowliness, unquote, by, if you're a nine, not engaging life or a one with wrath or resentment to pride. Pride and an overestimation of my uh, specialness in someone else's life. Three, uh, type three would be deceit, dishonesty. Type four would be envy or jealousy. 
Um, a type five would be greed. The greed for details and knowledge for the sake of details and knowledge to hide behind uh, that con the concepts and details without sharing the person. The six would be fear and constant anxiety. Uh, the seven would be gluttony, um, a, a, a gluttonous for adventure after adventure in the spirit of running away from our inner life. And lastly, we would have the eight personality who <clears throat> has a, uh, a lust for life that is an unquenchable and it's related to the sense of having to possess other things or other people power prestige and possessions and that's actually um we all have those things and in the uh false self the false self's goals which are they definitely belong in the those three chakras below is we want relief from the existential pain like that's that's a constant cry is that we have inside is I got to get relief. Now, a lot of times this is unconscious. But the answer that oftentimes feels the right thing, because we're not conscious about it, that would be the false self's answer. And they are centered around power, prestige, and possessions. If I just had more power, uh, power to affect change you know like whenever i dabbled in with um the uh, disclosure community you know you would see people that i could see that had really low self-esteem and very low regard for themselves hatred really but in this area they they found an, a niche where they can feel some level of empowerment by scapegoating those whom they feel are the cabal or the evil ones, um, the sense of power. And, and of course, one can gain prestige in, in uh, such assertions. So with COVID and all of that and just the explosion of online activity, people getting in their lane, forming echo chambers, and then um, blasting out projections, those are all the false self's um, uh, power, energy, really, uh, for power and prestige and then possessions is this sense of not only wanting more because we have a sense that that will yet fill us but also to objectify other people um, objectify them as the evil ones or the wrong ones or those people um, and that way we can put ourselves uh, over and against others and all of this is done, believe it or not, with a desire to connect with the upper chakras. But it just keeps recycling and it ends up fostering what Ra talks about in the Law of One many times. The one thing that keeps us entrapped here in third density for re repeater, repeating, repeating third density is this bellicosity, this attitude of bellicosity towards ourselves and others. So you'll notice that people who are most angry at other people oftentimes are really themselves very angry at themselves. Uh, but they're often not conscious of that. So they project it right on top of other people. And that bellicosity then is an energy that just, it's the lower chakra system that gets then thrown out into the planetary vibrational environment and then just keeps replaying. And it's like a virus. It's a, it's a contagious virus that feels right because that's third density. That's the ethos of third density. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but the true self, the true self, it says, I yearn for our connection talking about the lower chakra. So it's like the upper chakras, uh, the heart and throat and indigo and even uh, higher uh, are 
saying in unison to the lower chakras, I earn, I yearn for our connection. Shall I tug all the more? That's that restlessness we feel sometimes. And the true self's answer is, if you want this, surrender, acceptance, compassion, forgiveness, and restitution. And if you think this is some sort of Christian theology I'm giving you, this is coming from the law of one. Surrender, acceptance, compassion, uh, forgiveness, and restitution. So we're going to talk in the next here the next few minutes about what that looks like. And this does indeed raise the self-esteem. So <clears throat> what does it look like when we're tapping into the green ray? As, as it's related to ourselves, seeing yourself from the light of understanding and realizing that you do belong. You're seeing yourself from the light of understanding and realizing that you actually do deserve to be here. You do belong. You belong to yourself. And by self, I mean capital S self. You belong to yourself, which is both your, you know, Dugness or Seracness or <laughs> Clareness, but it's, it's also the self that's the one infinite creator. That's the self to whom you belong. The blue ray uh, says honest, true, and free. And what I mean by free is free from being overly blocked in the other energy centers. That's what free means. Honest, true, and free communication to yourself regarding who you are. Because the truth is, you're not that great. I mean, you're not going to be you're, like, I'll think of myself or I'll just take myself like, um, there are, there are times when I think I, I, I don't know why anybody would want to come to me as a counselor. Like, my gosh, what am I doing? I'm an imposter. This is not all the time. This is occasionally, but I've had this before. Uh, but then when I see the honest, true and free communication, and I can see myself from the light of understanding and realizing that I belong to God, uh, and I'm, I'm, it's, it's God in me, it's the infinite creator in me, connecting with the infinite creator elsewhere outside of me. Well, then I can realize, you know, I'm not the greatest therapist in the world, but I don't have to be. I don't want to be. That's not my goal. Uh, I'm, I'm simply a tool. And the more I can surrender into the, my toolness, um, of the infinite creator, the more that I don't, that I don't operate from the lower chakras. It almost feels like you're just freewheeling it and just going out on complete faith. Uh, I'm an instrument of peace in this moment and come what may, I love this other person in front of me and I'm going to be present. That's not lower chakra stuff. The indigo ray <clears throat> is opened only, this is quote from Ra, the indigo ray is opened only through considerable discipline and practice, largely having to do with acceptance of self, not only as the polarized and balanced self, but as the creator, as an entity of infinite worth. And this begins to activate the indigo ray. So it's the practice of accepting ourselves, not only as someone who's trying to be polarized, polarizing more to the positive and balancing, learning about our inner lives, seeing ourselves as the creator. The creator is whole. Goodness is defined as wholeness. Holiness comes from wholeness. 
And we such we are an entity of infinite worth. Why? Because you are the creator having this experience even in the moment of feeling insecure. That is the creator feeling insecure. That in of itself is holy. Can you can you dig that? You see, and that's an upper chakra realization. It takes the pressure off of you being, uh, you know, needing to be important. <laughs> because you don't need to be important. You are important because it's through you the Creator learns and loves. And finally, the violet ray, seeing yourself as a holy sacrament given to the world so that the world can awaken to its holiness. Let me say that again. This is Violet Ray Awakening. Seeing myself, seeing yourself truly as a holy sacrament given to the world by the infinite creator so that the world around you can awaken to its inherent dignity and holiness. I got to tell you, when you're operating in that space, the joy is overwhelming. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It, it, a a 10,000 pounds of pressure just, get, just come off. There's no weight you carry. Because you realize I, I'm the gift I have in this moment is just to be in this moment right now, existing and giving love. Because I am made from love. I come from love. I am love. Love is in me. And I give love out away. And the more I give it away freely, the more I get the cycle, the law of doubling just keeps growing and growing and growing till you can't stand the joy almost. I mean, you don't want it to stop, but it's just, this is the, the, the realm of the upper chakras. And this is the antidote to loneliness or insecurity is to surrender into the pain that we're in. So there's a way to do that. Um, <clears throat> when you are connecting and living from your upper chakras, when you are in a, a moment of insecurity, try this. Will I survive? Yeah. Why? Because I've already died before. And I will, and I always rise. I've already died. How many times have I died in, even in this lifetime, in risen, die, die and rise, death and renewal, loss and renewal, insecurity, and then surviving it. Will I survive? Yeah, I'll survive. Then the personal identity, who am I now? Well, say to yourself, I am, and then insert your name, so I'll say it my name. I am Doug, experiencing this moment as me. And I have the power to find something right now to be grateful about. Right now. I am Doug, experiencing, so who am I? I'm Doug, experiencing this moment as Doug. And I have the power right now to find something to be grateful about. Guys, when you do that, this automatically connects to the upper chakras. And then the third chakra's question is, do I belong? Well, at that point, you kind of don't really care. <laughs> I don't know if I belong. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe to this click, maybe to that click. I don't know. I don't really need to know because I know one thing. I belong to myself. 
I belong to my path. I belong to my journey. And to the infinite creator. I belong to my specific path because that is the infinite creator in me living in and through and as me. That's, that's what I know I belong to. So this is the last thing I'll, I'll say. Um, and it's the sum and summation of how to raise our self-esteem is actually not trying to raise your self-esteem. <laughs> Maybe this whole thing was a red herring because I talked about self-esteem, but it's really, you can't. Because believe it or not, psychological studies show that the more that we have taught people to try to raise their self-esteem, the more they actually end up living in their false selves and start comparing uh, a comp in a comp competition way that I can't have higher self-esteem unless I'm number one. And there's no room for number two. So what we have found since this push of trying to build self-esteem in the past 30 years is actually led to a, a very uh, high rise and a significant increase in narcissism. And, and some psychologists believe it's related to uh, the, the push for self-esteem. Not that we should say the cabal is behind that. <laughs> Not saying, you know, uh, some evil entities behind that. It's just that this is how humans grow as we try something on for a while. And when we see it doesn't work, then we, we pull back and we move in a different direction. Grateful for what we gained, but now seeing the weeds from the wheat. So there's three steps. Three steps to raising self-compassion. And self-compassion is actually, this is being studied by Dr. Kristen Neff. I'll, I'll give a link to this. Uh, Dr. Kristen Neff is the, the foremost researcher um, along with Chris, Dr. Christopher uh, Germer. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. These are the two self-compassion gurus that we have in the States. And there's three steps um, that are talked about. One is accepting what is. So, for example, uh, Neil, the next time you're in a position, and it'll probably happen tomorrow, not if, but when, where you start to feel that old familiar friend rising up of the insecurities of the who am I's and the will I survive and all of that stuff. Um, what we do is we completely and totally accept that in this moment, that is how I feel. Like I'm literally going to not, I, I'm going to even act as if I chose to feel this way. <laughs> like, like bring it to that level. Like I'm insecure. Heck yeah. I chose it, man. You know, <laughs> you literally accept it as it is with no strings attached. Because if we bring any, any conflictual energy in that moment to we'd rather it be something else, um, that just feeds the, lo the, the lower chakras more and more. And, you know, we're searching for that power or maybe that prestigious thing that I can earn or get or that possession if I had that, you know, and just we keep churning the wheel. But if we accept what is... Um, there is no power. There's no conflictual power. It's just, it's, it's the image of being crucified upon the cross, naked and nailed, where it's a 180 degree embrace of reality. Then we, we talk to ourselves in the moment as if we were talking to someone with whom we, we, had a, we felt a warm connection. Now, this does take practice because we often don't talk to ourselves warmly. I don't know about you, but there's often a critical voice in the old ear, you know, uh, can even be yelling, the, criti the critical voices. But if we can learn to get in the habit of talking to ourselves in the moment, uh, kind of what Shrock was saying a little bit, uh, talk to yourself as if, you are talking to someone 
with whom you had a warm connection. Doug, it's okay that you're feeling insecure right now. You don't know these people and you don't know what they're thinking. It's okay. I get it. I see you. I see you, Doug. You see? And then this is some, and, and you know, this is what I'm about to say now. This is something that it really brings it home. It's the exclamation point. Um, and it's absolutely, I think, how to live out the law of one. Because when you can accept what is, don't try to change it. And then you talk to yourself as if you were talking to someone with whom you had a, you had a, a warm connection. The third step is to open your heart to others in the world in that moment that may be experiencing something similar that you're feeling right now and wish them well. Because you got to know, I mean, just this, this little group here, uh, there, <laughs> probably seven out of ten people are feeling similar things. So imagine multiplying that by 8 billion people. You know what I mean? I mean, how many people right now are feeling these kinds, have felt these kinds of things? Open your heart in love and embrace them because they're experiencing this and they have no one to give. Maybe they don't have anybody to give. They feel all alone just like you do. And I do when we're in these moments, these, this grind. Bless them. Surround them with, with love. Um, I usually use green light, but you can do white light or blue light. Surround them with love and wish them well. Wish them wholeness. Integratedness. Bless them. And tell them you see them. I see you. My brother and my sister, my friend, I'm walking with you in this, in it with you. And I love you. I love you. I don't know you, but I know you and I love you. And what's really amazing is when you do this, your heart just opens up. And whatever insecurity or, or you are feeling... <laughs> Um, it's not like that uh, That just goes away. This is not uh, a drug that you take and you don't feel it. What this is, is using your pain to go through it in the heart chakra, and then using your pain to actually become a holy offering to other people who are feeling this too and bless them. And what that does is it decreases whatever pain you are in, it decreases it, the duration of time you would have it, and also the intensity. So it might go down from a, from a, a say a nine to a two, and it might go from an hour to one minute. But the weird thing is, is that at that level, you don't even care. Because it's kind of like, oh, well, I feel insecure. I'm not going to let that bother me. <laughs> okay, no problem. And, and, and then that's how it goes away. That's how you get through this. So um, I'm just going to, I know it's, it's a little over, but I just want to, does this resonate with people? Does this make sense? Or uh, do you feel like this is a tool, maybe some tools you can work with? Um, I'll say really quickly on the slide that you had, the magnet, I kind of almost had like a um, self um, epiphany when I was looking at how you have these shockers I guess you can say depicted that way where I kind of realized if you apply the high, the qualities of the higher chakras to the lower ones and that, that can bring the, you know, the lower chakras and the energies up to balance. So for instance, you know, um, the question is, will I survive? If you apply the indigo red quality of faith to that, that balances that, or um, I don't love myself. I have low esteem. If I apply love, the green ray, quality of that or you know do i belong in this group do i belong to others applying the blue ray quality of communication being real so that was just some kind of realization i had there you said it better than i did that's beautiful well done thank you thank you yeah well very good um uh would somebody like to close us out 
for this. Yeah, that'd be great. In fact, yeah, I really resonate with this, Doug, and I. It's something we all experience, I guess, with these archetypical, the matrix and the and your conscious. Yeah, everything you've been talking about the last few weeks. Like this is interesting because it's something we all experience. Just this, it was all designed to gain experience. This whole thing, but yet we are. There's an infinite amount of unique ways we can navigate these experiences to engage with these higher energy centers. And I think it would really excite me to hear how everyone does it, how everyone is learning how to do it. It's just infinitely um, opening to each of us. And uh, I can close us in prayer as well. I just want to say that too. Um, Cool. Well, um, let's let's all close our eyes and um, Take a deep breath in, and um, if you all would, I would invite you to focus your attention on your heart. Um, All of your attention, all of your thoughts, all of your etheric energy, just direct it towards your heart. Uh, Father, infinite creator, we we know this is not the density of understanding, yet you graciously teach us, um, and we are slow to learn, but that's okay. Um, our prayer is that we would be quick to love and that we would let our learning grow to the extent that we love and that we would let our love continue to shine regardless of how much we know, um, that we would know that faith and will and trust are, are, are lessons that we can't learn in a book or through concepts but that we learn through the lived embodied experience here in this third density. And as we focus our attention on our hearts, that we would know that um, an open heart is the secret weapon. Um, That's not quite a secret because it's something we all have. And we are all in your heart. I pray that we would know that and resonate deeply with that that as the catalysts arise within us, that we would know that within all of it, we are in your infinite heartbeat, that we are in your infinite love. Uh, We thank you for Doug and his time and his energy preparing this. And um, I pray a blessing over our time tonight and over the upcoming week that we would just radiate love to ourselves and to those around us. Amen. Amen. Beautiful.